Look at this little boy. Look at this little boy. This is my puppy. He's cute and his bum smells horrendous at the moment. You smelly fart boy. You smelly fart boy. I think realistically, these videos are going to end up being more of a timeline of my hair. How I go from looking like an adult to a teenager just because my hair's getting longer. Today, we're not going to piss around, be around the bush. We're going to crack on with it. Quick thing before we do, you know the drill. 100 likes on the video, I'll make more videos like this. If we don't get 100 likes on the video, I'll wait until we do get 100 likes on the video before I make more videos like this. So we're going to do. If you haven't already, sub to the channel. Red button down below. Doesn't require a lot of effort, but it means a lot to me. And if you're bored, watch me on Twitch because I'm probably streaming tonight and surprisingly based on what you actually told me to do i've decided to make a fitness tiktok account i've got my gaming one which is doormat face i've now got my fitness one which is harry tfnl link down below or on screen where i'm basically going to call out some things because tiktok is full of nonsense upload some things and hopefully make you tolerate me and somewhat maybe laugh in 60 seconds or less so if you have tiktok i would really appreciate it if you follow me at harry underscore tfnl Doing something slightly different, we talk about actually making gains, which is something that I've dreamed of for God knows how many years now, and something that I'm still working towards achieving. If you're not training arms every day, are you doing it right? Probably not. So here's the thing, I've been training for Lord knows how many years now. I, to be honest, realistically, I stepped foot in the gym for the first time when I was like 16, which was now 11 years ago. A lot of that for many years was pissy around doing some awful training, primarily surrounding bench press because as a teenager, all I wanted to do was bench. My dad was trying to point me in the right direction. I would say, not today, dad, we bench press. You bench yesterday, not today, dad, we bench press. You bench yesterday, dad, I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. And we ended up benching four plates so something worked. But as a teenager, I spent most of my time trying to get bigger arms because that's all you want and I did everything under the sun to achieve that and that even included one of Flex magazines put an inch on your arm in six week plan things that they included in one of their editions which involved training arms heavily three times a week for six weeks funny story do you know, do you know how much size I put on my arms that's right you guessed it I put on absolutely nothing no millimeter no centimeter no inch nothing I made no progress in six weeks and the reason for that is going to be covered at the very end of the video and it's a pretty good reason. It's probably quite a common reason. It's probably a reason that you may not necessarily be progressing as much as you would like. But yeah, the point is I spent mass amounts of time doing irrelevant stuff and unnecessary stuff to try and achieve an unrealistic goal. But do you know what did help me put size on my arms? Do you know what did help me put size on in general? Training the muscle more frequently. Like I said, I used to have designated arm days back in the day. It was crap. It was just absolutely crap. Because ultimately, especially during the earlier stages of training, if you're designating one day and one day only a week to a muscle group that you want to prioritize, you're essentially giving yourself one opportunity a week to progress, to grow. Why not half the daily volume, keep the weekly volume the same and just split it over two days? A couple of bicep movements after pull, a couple of tricep movements after push. It makes so much more sense focusing on weekly volume over daily volume. After training, protein synthesis is optimized for a short period of time. Surely you want to optimize that multiple times a week, thus giving you more opportunities to grow in that week for the muscle group you're trying to prioritize. Another thing I failed to do back in the day was range of motion. I was doing push downs with a stack, but I wasn't even getting my elbows at 90 degrees. I was doing dumbbell curls and swinging like you wouldn't believe. Does that rhyme? Degrees, believe, I'm gonna say yes. Mad, I didn't even get a degree in English. Eminem, Haranem, could do, could do. Ultimately, if you're gonna try and grow your arms, you need to go through a full stretch and full contraction. But then again, don't neglect going heavy. Progressive overload, the fundamental principle of progressing. Every session you train arms, every session you do any arm movement, try and do more than you did the week before. If you don't, you're not doing anything to cause adaptation to occur. Especially when you're training your triceps, think about the movements you can incorporate that really push that ability to progressively overload, i.e. close grip bench press, overhead extensions of some kind like skull crushes, dumbbell overheads, things like that. I'd always hammer in the compounds first, like the close grip bench press, followed by like a skull crusher, and maybe in isolation afterwards if you're chucking in three movements. I didn't piss around wasting my time with low weight, high reps. Realistically, that has a place either at the very start of the pre-exhaust or towards the end of the workout. 
that that should not be the bread and butter of your workout. Biceps are a bit different though. I find that I can't go too heavy without causing some forearm tendonitis issues. But again, that's probably from bad training in the past that has come back to bite me. You still can do things like heavy barbell curls. I prefer easy bar curls, a bit easier in the forearm due to wrist positioning. You can also do heavier hammer curls, things like that but then take it down to the lighter movements to really get the burn, the contraction, the mind-muscle connection, being things like concentration curls, cable curls, etc. But again, triceps are key. Don't be going in smashing out four bicep movements and one tricep movement. I am 90% tricep, which is probably why I bench four plates at 23 years old. But the big one is this. This is a tip I was gonna tell you at the start, but I saved it for the end, and the tip that helped me most, not just when it comes to arm progression, but just progression in general. For so many years of my training career, I did not gain weight. I hovered at the same weight and ex experienced no change. Changes. If you don't eat, you don't grow. It's that simple. If you're like me, well, I didn't want to eat because I was relatively lean and I didn't want to get fat because I wanted to look lean, I'm sorry but tough. You have to make a sacrifice at some point and that needs to be weighed up in your head. You almost have to take that temporary hit to look bigger but not quite as lean to then look bigger and just as lean as you were before in the future. First of all, I wouldn't focus on just training arms anyway. I would focus on training the body evenly, especially for the first few years, and then work on addressing weaknesses you may have. But I'd also push towards a really slow and steady bulk. And I mean a really slow bulk. Half a pound a week max sort of thing. I mean like three years. With mini cuts and recomps in between. Yeah, it's annoying because you don't look shredded for beef in the summer. Yeah, it's annoying because all your friends are walking around with their tops off with these six six pack abs and you're probably not quite as lean as you would like to be. But in a few years time, when your friends really haven't grown much, but yet you're there having packed on some solid size, who's gonna be laughing then? If you're not that stressed about anything else, protein and calories are gonna be the two you're gonna focus on. Don't forget to drink enough water. When I first started training at 16, I benched the bar and I failed. My dad had to take it off my chest. I couldn't even dumbbell press. Dumbbells only went down to 10 kilos and I was too heavy. But within a year, I got to 100 kilos on the bench press. It took me then two years to put on less than 20 kilos to my bench press. Then I started eating and I put on over 20 kilos to my bench press within a year. Put the food in, take the temporary hit to how you look, just to look even better in the long run and pack on that good size. And if you care enough, I'll give you four of my favorite exercises for the triceps and four of my favorite exercises for the biceps. Close grip bench press. Find me a tricep movement that you can go heavier on. I'll wait. Skull crusher or skull crusher variations. JM press. A weird movement and very similar to a skull crusher. It's kind of like a hybrid between a skull crusher and a close grip, but it's also one that really helped me with my tricep development and also really helped me get to the 180 kilo bench press. Then the fourth and final would just be a simple isolation. I like right push downs because you can really separate at the bottom and get a good pinch. When it comes to biceps, things are pretty boring. I like a standard easy bar curl. I like a dumbbell hammer curl. I like an incline dumbbell curl. And I like a simple cable cable curl. But you don't need to overcomplicate things. You don't need to do one-legged Bosu ball overhead extensions with a bicep curl on the other arm just to get growth. Keep it simple, but follow the fundamental principles. Overload. Sufficient rest, but not taking the piss. Time under tension, things like that. Quality over quantity. But don't be afraid to cheat for the last couple, especially on the heavier movements if you need to. And if you care about what I looked like throughout my training years, here's a picture of me before I actually started training. I'm 15 years old at this point, just about to turn 16. And as you can see, there are no gains. I'm about 57 kilos. Bear in mind, I have no idea how tall I was. I mean, I'm six foot two now. I was probably still quite tall back then. Fast forward about six months. I'm now 16 years old. I've been training for a few months. I'm about to start my GCSE period at school. I think I'm the biggest, swollest, juiciest fat boy around with my biceps out, my tank top out. Bench press every day. No idea how much I weighed. My guess is, low 60s, maybe mid 60s if I'm feeling a bit naughty. We go forward another two and a half years or so. I just turned 19. This is back in my MMA days when I was actually agile, nimble, you know, and cardiovascularly fit. Uh, I'm none of those things now, unfortunately. I want to say I weighed in at 80 kilos, 80.5 on the day. Probably about as tall as I am now, six foot two. Relatively lean though. So after the fight, I decided it's time to get bigger. Focus kind of shifted from MMA, which I've done for about three years at this point, more towards bodybuilding, I guess. Fast forward two and a half years. I'm 21 years old. Just gone to LA with my boy Breach, meeting Don Mazzetti, bro science here, and I weigh 100 kilos. So I've gained in two and a half years 20 kilos and you can see there is a noticeable size difference. Fast forward about three years at this point, my focus has massively shifted from bodybuilding to powerlifting and I'm weighing about 110 kilos, a fair bit bigger but also a fair bit chunkier. The fluff is definitely there, but size is, size is still not where it needs to be, not where it should be. Team Forever Small, shout you out, that's me. We're, we're making progress slowly. Fast forward another two years, focus has now shifted from powerlifting back to bodybuilding. I'm in the lower hundreds here, but I'm also a lot leaner than I was in the last picture. Size is probably similar, condition is definitely a lot better and I look a lot healthier to be honest. Essentially what you would have seen from the first picture is a man with maybe 10 inch arms at best. Long, skinny and lanky. Fast forward to what you see in the last picture 
It's a man rocking maybe 17 and a half, 18 inch arms with the pump. Near eight inch difference over what, 10 years at this point? I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but considering most of those inches were gained in the later years, when in reality they should have actually been gained in the early years, really highlights the importance of actually training properly and eating. The take home message is this, train smart, train hard, eat more, and don't follow Flex Magazine's gain an inch on your arms in six weeks program. It doesn't work. Again, if you like the video, let me know you like the video, 100 likes down below and I'll make another. If you have any questions, drop me a message on Instagram. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for tolerating the video.